things are going all too well in the city of Quaint. So well, in fact, that something has to be done. The zeal for goodness can be catastrophic, and no one knows this better than Bocaline and Corporal Brooch, two stalwart champions of all things bad. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hambar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler for your view of Steven Erickson's The Healthy Dead. The Healthy Dead is a 2004 um, novella, I believe. Um, it is second in the tales of Bocalane and Corporal Brooch, which is connected to the Malazan world. Um, if you might recognize these characters, Bocalane and Corporal Brooch do appear in the book Memories of Ice, but I read this before Memories of Ice, and since it's the second one, I obviously read the first one before Memories of Ice as well. In fact, I read the first one before any other Malazan, and that is on purpose. This is kind of a short book in the, in the tradition of Liber's Fafra from the Grey Mouser. Uh, it's way more absurd, though, it's kind of like Pratchett in that sense, or what I imagine Cabell reads like, but I have yet to read Cabell. The characters are uh, a kind of a flipping of the normal sword and sorcery protagonists. Uh, they are sorcerers, right? They are basically antagonists to the good guys. They're, they're kind of good, but they're not. They're really just not. So they're seen from the eyes of the everyman, immense poor Reese. The story is set in the city of Quaint, where those injured in public service are venerated as living saints. And this is because the cult of the Lady of... Beneficence is the only legal religion um, that is, you know, put into law by this new king. Uh, he, if well, rather, if you die healthy, you get the lady's blessing in the afterlife. Um, if you die unhealthy and you don't, uh, well, you don't even get a burial. Your corpse is hung outside the city. Uh, there's this weird idea of saints as well, but it is rather sinister. It's, uh, you know, done with a face of benevolence. It's kind of a dystopia of sorts, though it doesn't feel the same as, well, generally those you find in sci-fi. Um, they do um, need, there is a need here rather to save civilization, but it is kind of showcasing how fragile civilization really is. It's really refreshing and even thoughtful in a fun manner, kind of like Vance or even a little bit like Liber uh, beyond those, you know, uh, Fafra and Great Master comparisons. There also seems to be a passel of demons in this story, of course, uh, and the point of view switches so much I kind of felt like I was reading um, an Ed Greenwood novel. Um, this is supposedly set four years after the first novella, which puts it after Memories of Ice. Um, it is, again, very crude humor. I did laugh out loud, actually, at this one, but it's definitely adult humor. Um, but, again, you don't have to read the other Malaz and stuff to read at least, uh, to yeah, to read these first two Bocalane and Corporal Brooch tales. I'm not sure about the other ones. I know a lot of people recommend you read these after reading Memories of Ice. I disagree. You could easily read these beforehand, like I did. Um, so, uh, and, you know, if you don't want to read such a big thick epic books like Malaz and Book of the Fallen or whatever, this might be a good thing for you. They're short, really easy to read. It's not thick prose at all, and it goes very quickly, and, you know, the length of the book helps, of course, too. Um, but it might even push you to get into those bigger books if you would like to, of course. I kind of read it for that purpose. It's like, I need to read Memories of Ice, but it's too big, so let me read this real quick, and then it'll encourage me, and it did, because I started Memories of Ice right after. Anyway, it's been Leon Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.